If you aren't careful with creating AI phone calling systems specifically for outbound, your campaigns might have a high tendency to fail. And why is that? Because you're hit by things like caller reputation, rate limits, and there are tons of other limits that can literally cause big problems, especially when you start scaling your agents. In today's video, I'm going over a simple concept that you can leverage to literally optimize your outbound campaigns in a way that they are more scalable without running into all of those issues. At the end of this video, you will know exactly on how you can create voice assistants that can literally initiate calls from multiple numbers. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Janis Mohr. I run my very own AI agency that helps businesses like yours to leverage voice AI so that you can stay ahead of your competition. Now to get the idea to you visually, I created a graphic that explains basically the infrastructure and how we are going to get there. I will go with you through everything step by step so that you can literally just follow me along on the screen. And as always, you will get access to all of the automations, scenarios and whatever else I show inside of my videos directly inside of my research hub, which you will find down below in the description. Simply head over to hub.integraticals.com, create a free account and you will get access to all of those resources so that you can follow me along on the screen without doing much. But with that out of the way, let's dive right into it. And as you can see on my screen, there is now the beautiful graphic that I built out for you, which has a couple of properties. Obviously, number one is the user, which is nothing else than the user we are going to call, cold call, whatever it is you do with your outbound campaign. Then as a second step, we have VAPI, which is the AI infrastructure provider we are using for actually initiating the phone calls or better the AI phone calls. So this platform is literally managing everything that has that happens within the phone call itself. If you don't know about VAPI, simply check it out. It's awesome. I have tons of resources on my channel, including templates and other stuff that you can download and use directly inside of your business. The next thing we are going to use is a logic platform. In our case, that is make.com. And if you have not heard of make.com, you definitely should check it out as well. It's one of my favorite tools out there. It is basically a SaaS that allows you to do workflow automation, which is nothing else than connecting different services together so that they can communicate with each other. And you usually do this in a programmatic way so that you don't need to do those things manually. Then we are going to use Google Sheet as a storage. And in our case, we are going to use it as a storage of the references of the phone numbers that we actually want to use dynamically for the assistant but I'm going to dive into that in a moment. And lastly, we have the actual phone numbers that we would like to use inside of our assistant. So now if we're putting all of this together, you can see already that there are a couple of things that happen. Obviously, in my case, make.com is basically the platform that will initiate those phone calls because it is outbound phone calls, right? We need some kind of event that needs to happen so in, in order for us to send out those phone calls. This can be anything from your very own CRM, your very own POS system, whatever it is. In my case, I usually build this stuff out on Google Sheets. And whenever you add a new lead inside of the Google Sheet, it will basically trigger an outbound call and can then collect more information. You have seen that in my previous videos, probably there are tons of templates about that, where I basically create those outbound calling assistants. And this one basically will make a request to Vapi and tells Vapi, aha, okay, cool. We need to have a call and this call will then be transferred to the user. Like this is the very basic scenario of how that phone calling works, right? So we have make.com that initiates the phone call, Vapi that actually handles the whole phone calling stuff, sets it up and actually sends the phone call to the user and then basically has that whole loop right within here. So now if we are talking about dynamic numbers, there are a couple of more steps. Obviously numbers itself are added to Vapi with whatever provider you use. That can be Twilio or Vonage. So if you use Twilio, you simply import all of the numbers from Twilio or you purchase them directly inside of the Vapi dashboard. That is completely up to you. It works in both cases or in, let's say, all three cases with Vonage as well. And once you have done that, we basically then make a reference inside the Google Sheet where we basically just have the IDs of those phone numbers. And what then happens is in case we initiate a phone call through make.com, we are first requesting one specific phone number from our Google Sheet, which we then basically take to initiate the phone call to Vapi. And then Vapi chooses the phone number and basically starts the call with that phone number. In the end, with a normal phone call, we have something like make.com starts the Vapi or make.com sends the phone call to Vapi. Vapi actually starts the phone call with the user. Now in that case of a dynamic assistant with actually dynamic phone numbers, it goes from make.com to the Google Sheet, fetching the, the phone number reference, going back to make.com and sending that stuff to Vapi. Vapi then takes the new phone number and starts the call to the user. So this is just a visual explanation of that whole scenario. And we are now diving right into it. I haven't built it out, but I'm going to show you exactly what you need. And you will also have access to that as a download right within my resource hub after this video. So number one is obviously you need to have a Google Sheet, which can be literally any kind of Google Sheet you want to create. If you already use some from my previous videos, you can literally just implement that as a new sheet down here. And 
there are two main things that we need, which obviously is the phone number ID, which is the first field. And the second field we are going to use is called status because I always like to have a status field, which allows me to visually just deactivate a number or not. So once you have done that, you are basically already set with the whole Google Sheet. Now we simply add in the dynamic information, which means all you would do is you would head into all your WAPI dashboard. And inside the WAPI dashboard, you would head over to phone numbers right here. And you will see all of your imported phone numbers right within this list. So the more phone numbers you have, the more possibilities and the more scalable your whole agent will be, right? Because the main problem is that if you call from a specific phone number too many times in a very short period of time, you might have a higher chance of actually being rate limited or you getting restricted in other ways. So to overcome that, we are going to click now this button right here, which copies basically the ID that is assigned to that phone number inside of Vapi. We head back into our Google Sheet and you now paste it in a new row within that phone number ID field. As a status, I'm going to set it to active, which means the phone number will be active. This is basically the way on how I track those things. So now we basically, if you have more phone numbers, all you would do is you would literally just paste those phone numbers down here and you would then also set active or inactive or whatever you want for all of the other phone numbers right here. So this is basically the way how you initiate the phone number references. So you list all of your phone numbers here and you set the status. Once you have done that, it is time to actually go into your workflow or whatever you do where you created the dynamic or transient based assistant within Vapi. So again, if you have used my previous tutorials with make.com, it is probably the easiest way to get started. I'm also going to explain you the setup with make.com as it is still fairly easy to manage and it's literally a couple of integrations, so it's, it's not much. So, but in order to do that, I head over to make.com. I basically create a new scenario. You can do this under scenarios and then you will have a button up here in the right to create a new scenario and then it will look something like this. So obviously I would usually, if I would have an outbound agent, I would have a full scenario or full workflow available here that basically initiates the dynamic or transient based assistant and I can make my phone calls etc and if you already know about transient based assistants great if not check out my other video but if you do know you definitely know that inside of the transient based assistants for an outgoing call you will be able to define a phone number ID and this phone number ID is super important because otherwise your transient based assistant doesn't even work so now I'm basically just simulating a workflow that basically starts whenever my lead list is called or whenever a new lead is added I'm just going to use do that by using the webhook endpoint because I can literally just call it from the browser and try it. So I'm gonna add a new one, just going to call this one dynamic phone number test or something. I'm gonna click OK. And now once I have this URL, we are basically ready with this one. So I just click OK. And now we are starting with the actual logic of getting that information from the phone number or basically validating the phone number, right? So this will be our trigger and this one runs all the time whenever we have, for example, a new lead coming in or whatever way it is that you actually set up your outbound lead triggers. So I'm just gonna run that once just to show you that it works. So now it's basically running. All I do is I head to a new page. I, I quickly call this URL. You can see it says accepted. If I head now back into here, we will see that the response basically comes through and we basically received it inside of our scenario, which means I now can already simulate a trigger in a certain way, which obviously in your case would look different. But now we come to the actual sauce, which is the exact structure on how we can get a random number assigned to an assistant. So for doing that, what we do is we add another module. We're gonna select Google Sheets. We're going to search for search rows. This is the one you're going to select. And now all you do is you basically add this, this spreadsheet right here. I actually haven't give, given it a name, so we're gonna do that. We call it Puppy Dynamic Number YouTube Test. So you will have access to this Google Sheet as well. You can also download that inside of the resource hub or copy it better. Now I head back into my integration. So all you need to do now is you simply head inside the spreadsheet and you basically paste the name of the spreadsheet that we just created, which in my case would be Vapi dynamic assist dynamic number YouTube test, which is this one. So I simply open that one and now you will see it basically loads and I can select the sheet name, which is obviously sheet one, which is defined right here. So in case you're gonna change that, you also need to adjust the sheet name inside of the scenario, very important, otherwise you will get arrows. Now within the filter, we obviously select the status B and we set it to active, which means we only want to select the active numbers, which is exactly what I would like, cause this basically allows me to deactivate numbers temporarily. Let's say I have a specific number here and I would like to deactivate it, I can simply set it to something else or to be more precise to inactive and then this number would basically not be selected perfect so if we are going to run this scenario now we can already try this i'm just going to refresh this url heading back in here waiting until it runs and we should then see the phone numbers that we just 
created inside of our Google Sheet. So it just took a moment and here we are. It is now, it now ran. And now if we click on this little bubble up here, you can see that we have access to all of those phone numbers right here. So they're basically inside of bundles. You can see the phone number ID and you can also see the status. Perfect. This is exactly what we needed for that. And now as a next step, we want to basically combine all of those iterations together because so they are bundles, which basically means that each of those bundles would have their very own execution path. If you don't understand what that means, just look at this. It's like a, like a connector. We basically put all of them back together into one big object so that we can access them afterwards. This is exactly what we do. So you basically just add the array aggregator, you click on the source module and inside the source module, you click on the search rows part, which is this one, which you then do also directly in your scenario. And now within here, we simply scroll down to the phone number ID. This is the only one we are going to select. I click okay now. Actually, I didn't select it apparently. Let me see, I think this one should be selected. No, also not. Perfect. Now, once this is done, we can actually already extract the information. I'm going to do this by just running the scenario once more. You can just use the existing data because it doesn't really matter. Perfect. So if we are looking into that now, you can see that we have an array with all of those phone numbers in one, which is exactly what we would like to have. So now we are ne nearly there. The last part is we basically need to first find one of those random numbers right within this array right here, then basically take that number and add it to a variable. And there are a couple of steps we need to do that all happen inside of the same integration. So we simply add another integration here. We go to tools, we set, click set variable, and we can call this variable, for example, dynamic phone number, because this is gonna be the variable that you after use to actually add this phone number ID to your dynamic transient based assistant. So within the variable value, it's going to become a little more complex, but I'm going to walk you through step by step. And I actually explain you how I'm going to set them up piece by piece, because there are a couple of functions internally within make that we need to use. Obviously, since we we have an array, the first thing we want to do is we want to shuffle it, which basically means we want to go through all of the arrays, change the order of it so that it's completely mixed and we don't know which one was the first or the last one, which uh, again, obviously sounds a bit weird, but this is necessary just for having a dynamic output. So we basically just add the shuffle function right under the array section right here. And inside of it, I am simply going to add the array. This is step number one. Now we basically, with this code, we basically have a shuffled version of that array, which is nothing else than this list, but the list was basically just mixed up. All of the elements are somewhere else, but still on the same layer, but somewhere else. So now you basically just copy that part by my marking everything and cutting it. So we completely cut it out. So you have it in your clipboard now, which is what you need. Now the next step is we would like to extract the first element from that newly shuffled array. To do that, we go back to the array section right here. We click on first and you go in between those two brackets. You basically paste that part. And now we basically have have access to the very first element of that array. So since the array element is a collection, which you can see directly by clicking up here in the array section down here, you can see that it's a collection, which means we first have to convert it to an array. To do that, we're simply cutting out this whole part. We go back over here, we click to on two array, and we paste the whole part right within here. This is the next step. And there is one more step left after we have done that. We basically now shuffled the array. We took the first element of it. We converted it to an array because it was a collection before. Now I cut this whole part again. And what we do now is we click on map and inside of map, you basically paste what you have in your clipboard in the first position. So before the semicolon and in the last position, you simply add the word value and you click on okay. And this I suppose should be everything we need to do. I'm going to save this and I'm just gonna run this whole scenario once by clicking on it. I'm going to refresh this page page, which now should again trigger this whole workflow. And if everything works out and the basically the variables we created now, including all of the custom make.com functions that we just set up, we should get a single phone number as a result that is saved to that variable. For some reason, my notebook decided to be super slow today. So that's why it takes longer. Usually in your case as well, I assume when you create the scenario, this will be running through in literally like less than a second. But obviously I think something is stuck with my make.com. I probably built too many scenarios. So here we are. I'm just gonna wait until this is through. And there we go. It just ran through, perfect. And if we are now looking into the tools right here, you can see inside the dynamic phone number, we have that phone number available. So, and once you see this field like here on my screen, all you then need to do is you basically take this variable in your next step, which is probably creating the dynamic or transient based assistant within the HTTP module. And you probably have something like the, the make a request and in here, you usually would define a body, which is usually a JSON where you define this dynamic assistant, right? And here you can literally then inside of the phone number ID use that phone number that we basically added here, which is the first step, this one. And this literally allows you to get the dynamic phone number directly into your assistant and then calls it from there. So this whole setup allows you to basically already get the dynamic phone number. So I'm just gonna delete this module. So this whole part, these three integration basically allow you to get this dynamic phone number and you can then reuse that one inside of your transient based assistant wherever you create it. So even if it's on your custom platform, you can obviously just rebuild what I just showed you here in a custom way, or you can even just use another API call that basically sends that information 
to make and from make you can then use the, uh, the webhooks module with a response to basically send that information back to your very own website or your very own backend wherever you use that information. So I'm just gonna do that here. I basically just save that. It basically sends it back as a string right now but it's just demonstrating it to you. So whenever you call that you will basically get that phone number back as well. Awesome, so now we basically managed to actually create this whole structure with dynamic phone numbers and you can literally implement it wherever you want. And to give you some more advice for what else you can do with it after that, obviously if you create a lead list and you call a lead list, you might also want to know which phone number it actually called from in case you wanna debug something and it doesn't work. So what you can do is obviously, uh, my, my favorite suggestion is to just save this phone ID on the lead that you basically called in the moment you called. If you do multiple calls, you just save it for each of those calls in a separate column. Because that way you can keep track of which phone number actually got which result. And if you then do some analysis on the phone calls itself, you have a better understanding of what phone call had actually which kind of problems with which phone number, etc. So while this is just proving the concept to you that it works, you might still have problems implementing that if you're not fully familiar with make.com whatsoever. You're obviously most welcome to always reach out to our agency. We are usually doing these kind of things on a daily basis. So we are very well versed if it comes to creating those automations. So you're obviously most welcome to reach out to us. Otherwise, I have another video prepared that I'm going to show you very soon, which is a 2.0 version of the assistant cold calling framework that I showed a couple of weeks ago, which basically allows you to create a phone calling agent with dynamic variables, etc., directly inside of Wapi within less than 10 minutes. And I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek and I'm gonna tell you that I also implemented that part directly into the new assistant. It will be available there and you will basically then be able to have a fully structured setup where you can literally make cold calls with only a couple of tools that you can then use and leverage either for yourself for your own business or for your client so if you're interested in that assistant I definitely suggest you to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to release that one very very soon and you don't want to miss out because this is gonna be really awesome that's all I got for you so far if you have any questions feel free to drop them down below in the comments I'm usually reading them every day and if there's anything else I can help you with you're most welcome to share that as well either here in my community and for now that's all I got for you thanks for watching and see you next time